Hello and welcome to my Minecraft server tutorial video. Today I'm going to be showing everybody how to set up and play a Minecraft server on multiplayer. What I've noticed is, is what I wanted to do is play custom maps and here you can see this is a cool custom map that I'd like to play. It is for the new server 1.5.2 but when you see the instructions here it tells you to download and extract the maps into your app data and uh, and play but that's a single player and the problem is is I want to play with Diener so we can't play according to these instructions so what we need to do is run it on a multiplayer server and there seems to be no instructions how to do that so this is what I'm creating it for okay so first off we need to run a server before we get the custom map on there so this tutorial will show you how to do that as well so you go to minecraft.net right here you go to download and then you go to multiplayer server here right here now I just simply use the executable file there's another way to open up a uh, .jar file but we're gonna use this this is nice and simple so it downloads we click it download it into my downloads folder so I'm going to cut this out of here I'm going to put it on the desktop for the work that we're doing so right here I'm going to right click create a new folder I'm going to call it uh, server I'm going to go into it and I'm going to paste in the file that I downloaded the Minecraft server now when you run this it's going to create a bunch of files that is needed to run the server so the first time it'll create everything for you and in theory you're good to go you've now ran a multiplayer server which you can connect to using your local IP address or I believe just simply putting in local host but nonetheless now it's running I can run the command like op and then I'll add myself in which is Argus 1975 and now I am an operator on this server so I'm going to stop it because we need to change things okay so this is the server when it runs as you see I added an operator this is an ops list and you see I add the operator that's what I added but the important thing is is this server dot properties file it says properties right here you can't see it because I don't have my extensions showing but if I right click it and open with I'm gonna to want to open it with notepad here's the here's the the, uh, the important information here level name what I did not know is, is whatever level name you put in here is what folder it will use in your server so if I had a folder named dog if this first folder was not named world but if it was named dog instead now all I have to do is, is go into the server property and type in dog and it's gonna open up the server with this information which is cool that's how we're gonna do our custom map later we're gonna download it it'll be named something we'll just change it in here as well as many other properties that you can have fun changing in here such as the message of the day, a Minecraft server by Diener and Argus. Uh, monster spawning, max player, if you wanted to make it 100 person, you could do that. Uh, game mode, I'm going to set it to 2, which is adventure. And then PvP, person versus person, we're going to set this to false. And what else do I need? Oh, another thing. Texture pack right here. This is where if there was a texture pack and you wanted the people to download it when they came to your server, even if it's local, I could put in http diener and argus.com slash this is just where I know I have uh, files, Minecraft, and then I have one called texture. Dot zip. Now, in theory, when you were to log into this server, 
it would ask you to down, if you'd like to download the texture. But I'm not going to because we're not doing texture today. Though a lot of custom maps prefer a texture file to go with it, and they do tell you how to install that. Example being right here, the, the same way that you do it here, you would do the same thing. You would just instead of putting it in saves, you put it in your textures folder. Nice and easy. But for simplicity's sake, it's nice and easy. If you're going to know you're going to have a lot of people joining you, just put that texture file on a web server or a website, and then anybody that logs in can download it. So back to the server file. That's pretty much all we really need to mess with as far as this goes. I think I'm going to leave Archon off because we have full access to the console. Um, animals, I'm going to put the false because we're going to be playing an adventure map. Um, we don't need animals running around. Okay, so I'm going to hit save. Now, if save, there we go. Now, one thing you will notice is when I start this server up, my memory over here, memory use, I'm 50% free and I'm using 47 megabytes. That tells you that 100% megabytes or 100 megabytes is being allocated for this server. Not enough. So, how do we? allow more RAM to be used, well that's what I'm going to show you. What you do is you create a bat file, B-A-T, and you do that by opening up Notepad. You got a new Notepad, Oops. and you enter in this line here. This is the one that I have um, from another server, but you can find this. I found this on the internet, but it's just a, a string, a, a command. So you just paste it in here. It's the same for everybody, assuming you have Java installed in program files. Um, if not, then you got you have to change it. But let's see here. I go to program, program files, Java. This is a clue right there that it's we're, we're good. But if it's not, like example is, is if you were running a 64-bit processor or operating system and you are running, you wanted to run a 32-bit Java, it would be not programs, it would be programs, parentheses, x86. But either way, Java there, there it is, bin, and that's going to be the file that's going to be running. So anyway, but this is the important parts right here. These are the RAM. I'm not too sure why there's two of them. One's S, one's X, but either way, change them both. I lead them to a one megabyte, or one gigabyte rather, and that should be enough for what I'm doing. I have four gigabytes on my system, so I don't want to take up all my resources. So it's going to be opening up this program. It's going to be running this amount of memory. It's going to be a Java app, that's what this stands for, and the, the file that's going to be executed in Java is this Minecraft server. So we got it. Now we need to save it. I'm going to save as. This is the important part because it wants to do it default text document. We want to change that. We want to go to all files and now go to wherever you want it, wherever your server files are. I've got it on my desktop, server, and right in here. And I'm going to save it. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to call it run. But the important part is dot bat dot bat. So now that's in there. So now instead of having to double click the Minecraft server, I just double click this. Opens up a DOS command prompt, opens up the server, and you see we've got 90% free now, and we're at 63 megabytes. So, yay. You also notice here it says game type adventure because I changed it, and then preparing level dog, and that's, that's the map. So, next step is finding a cool map that we want to play. So mine that I want to play today is a Pirate's Life for Me Minecraft. So here it is. This is choose a server file. That's what I have right there. Okay, now this got me because I was stupid enough to start downloading the advertisements because I didn't see in the top right corner here it says skip ad. Definitely want to hit that. It goes right to the file. I'm going to download it. Here it comes. In the meantime, I'm going to get my 
Minecraft game icon on the desktop so I can play it. Okay, keep that up so I can play it later. Okay, that's garbage. Okay, it's downloaded, so I'm going to show it in my folder. And there's the the file. So I'm going to cut it. I'm going to put it for sim simplicity's sake. I'm going to put it on the desktop here. Now, if I go into it, I see it's not just a bunch of files, so I can actually extract here or here, either way. But I'm going to extract here. Okay, so here it is. This is the custom map. So, as you see, I go in. This is the data. It looks just like when I go into dog here. That's here. Now, if you wanted to be real simple and didn't want to edit any server commands, you could just drag all of this information here, have it replace this, and it would start right up. And this would be called world, and you wouldn't have to change anything. But what if you created a world, but you wanted to do a custom map, you don't want to delete all your old stuff. That would be the problem. So, we're not going to do it this simple way anyways because we want to learn how to do it the right way. Okay, so I'm going to simply right-click, cut this, paste it into my server folder here, and that's it. I'm going to leave it to name. I'm going to right-click it, or I can just click on here and copy this name here. Copy. Now I'm going to go to the server here, open this, double clicking it since it's automatically opened the notepad now. And here's where it says level name, dog. I'm going to delete that and just paste right in the name of the folder. It has to be identical to the name and capitals are important. So you can also change it. If I wanted to just change it to APLFM, that would be fine. Anything I want to do is fine. Same with texture files as long as they all match. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Yes. Now, instead of opening up in DOG, it's going to open up in this file. And it has all the information I need. And that's pretty much it. So, let's start our server. It's running. Okay, now, as you see this is running, we should be able to... I can close this too. That's once the DOS command opens up the Java, you can close it. I'm going to log in. So the important thing, another thing is, is what is your local IP address for this computer? Now, how you find that out is, is again a command prompt. So cmd. Now what we want to type in, we need to find our local IP address, not your one that you get from your internet service provider. So you can't go to like myip.com and figure this one out. You just do ip c o n f i g ip config. Hit enter, and this will have the information. It says IPv4 address 192.168.1.2 that'll be it and so that's the address that everybody's going to use to to connect to it. Okay so multiplayer direct connect or if you wanted to you can also add a server and just this name doesn't matter I can call it my local server, and then um, Pirates Life. Pirates, it'll be fine, it doesn't matter. But the important part is this address 192.168.1.2. Done. There it is. Or I could have just simply direct connect. But my local server, Pirates, double click on that. And we are in and on our way to adventure. <coughs> so that's pretty much it. Now anybody else can join 
And if you have another computer, it doesn't need to be its own IP config address. It needs to be the one that the server is running on. Um, it is smart if you really wanted to get down. You would want to run the server on a different computer that's on your network. And then another thing is all my computers are Wi-Fi. So they any as long as you're all sharing the same router, you can all log on. Obviously, people can join from outside your local area network or your router or your Wi-Fi, whatever you tend to call it. Yes, they can join on. But then you have to do things called port forwarding. And you also have to find out what your external IP address is which um, is really easy. The port forwarding part is a little difficult because you have to log into your firewall or your router uh, admin panel and forward all the ports. So if your IP address was 25.25.25.6, your friend down the street can put in that address and it's going to hit your router, but then your router needs to know where to point that to. And it would point it to 192.168.1.2, but you have to set that up. So as of right now, this server is just good for everybody on your local area network or your Wi-Fi, which is good enough for me because uh, Argus, I mean, Dina and I um, just want to play locally. Most adventure maps are for two to four, for one, anyhow. So, But you might want to have a friend play that's not in the same house as you, and that's how you do it. And I'll be doing a tutorial on how to do that later as well. So but as of right now, this gets you playing. Thank you for watching my video and good luck on creating your server.